Good morning. Today I'm launching a systemic investigation of Hydro One that will focus on two key issues. First, whether Hydro One's customer billing practices are transparent, and second, whether Hydro One's process for responding to customer billing concerns is timely and effective. Aujourd'hui, je lance une enquête systémique au sujet d'Hydro One qui portera sur deux questions fondamentales. Premièrement, nous chercherons à déterminer si les méthodes de facturation à la clientèle d'Hydro One sont transparentes, et deuxièmement, si le processus suivi par Hydro One pour répondre aux préoccupations de sa clientèle est rapide et efficace. This investigation is the result of years of behind-the-scenes efforts by my staff to resolve hundreds of complaints, one case at a time. We've helped many people sort out egregious errors and baffling bills. We've worked with senior Hydro One officials to ensure they credit people who were overbilled and don't cut off power to people in need. But the complaints have continued to increase. We are already more than double last year's amount, and we're only 10 months into the fiscal year. The stories we're hearing will be familiar to many of you in the media, stories of huge, unexplained catch-up bills, multiple bills, or estimated bills with no rhyme or reason. And when customers try to get answers from Hydro One, they are stymied, just as my office has often been stymied when we intervened. Les histoires qui nous parviennent sembleront familières à beaucoup d'entre vous qui travaillez dans les médias, histoires d'énormes factures de rattrapage non expliquées, factures multiples ou estimations qui n'ont ni rime ni raison. Et quand les clients essaient d'obtenir des réponses auprès d'Hydro One, ils se heurtent à un obstacle tout comme mon bureau l'a souvent fait quand il est intervenu. At this point, all this points to potential systemic problems that warrant an in-depth investigation by my special ombudsman response team. I have notified Hydro One and the Ministry of Energy of this investigation, and I expect their full cooperation in providing my investigators with interviews and information about Hydro One's billing and customer service operation. Anyone who has information relevant to this investigation is encouraged to complain my office. Our website is ombudsman.on.ca. However, I would also like to make clear that what this investigation is not about. It is not about the price of electricity. It's also not about compensation of Hydro One employees. And it is not about municipal utilities like Toronto Hydro, Ottawa Hydro, and others. In order to help the greatest number of people in the shortest amount of time, we will focus our investigation on the serious billing and communications issues that customers have raised about Hydro One, and we will complete it within nine months. After that, we will draft a report and recommendations based on the evidence gathered and the response we receive. Any questions? Uh, Incidentally, I just got an e email yesterday from uh, a gentleman who has a cottage up just north of Huntsville and complaining that he had a smart meter put in two years ago and it's never been used. Like they admitted, he called customer complaints, you know, because of, of the getting, you know, the small bills, small bills, and then getting the huge bill. Well, why don't you use that? And they said, well, we just can't. I mean, what was the sense of that? Well, part of our investigation is to look at the transparency and reliability of the billing system. Uh, we've received many complaints of that type. Yesterday, we started the day at uh, 625. We complaints, we ended the day at 655 before even this case was announced. I think the citizens of Ontario right now, or the public, are extremely upset. They are distressed. Uh, we are hearing from um, the public 
they are, that they are quite prepared to be socially re-engineered as electrical trained seals doing their laundry at certain times to avoid excessive billing. But on the other hand, they want to be able to understand their billing. They want accuracy in their billing. And all too often, we, we will hear cases where people don't get bills for months and months. And suddenly, because they have a direct withdrawal from their bank account, they wake up and their bank account's depleted and into their overdraft by ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And sometimes it is bona fide due amounts, but it's a, quite a shock to discover that when you wake up in the morning, and then they can't get through to Hydro One. In other instances, people wake up with ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 skim off their bank account by error. They didn't owe that money. And then in that case, Hydro One will simply say, we can't return the money. We will simply give you a future credit. So you got to use that amount of electricity in the future. So it's leaving a, a bad taste in the mouths of citizens of Ontario, and that's why we're going to look at those two issues. We need to peel the layers off the onion and see what's beneath this and what's, what is it that's causing all these problems. And I, our office has been involved for many years and more aggressively in the last few months in trying to get answers from Hydro One. Our calls aren't returned promptly. We don't see any kind of sense of urgency or dispatch. Their response to our queries uh, is anemic. And uh, we need to do more to move forward with all the complaints we're getting. And that's why we, we are launching this investigation this morning. Ceux qui dépendent d'Hydro 1 nous disent qu'il y a toutes sortes de problèmes avec la facturation et le, le service à la clientèle. On se lève un matin et puis on découvre que notre compte de banque euh, est réduit de 10 000 ou 20 000 que ces fonds-là manquent à leur, banque de, à leur compte de banque. Et c'est soit que Hydro 1, Hydro 1 plutôt, fait du rattrapage et vient rechercher euh, les montants qui sont dus après un ajustement, ou des fois, c'est une erreur. Et ces montants-là sont perçus par erreur. Et Hydro One prend la position qu'ils ne peuvent pas retourner l'argent qui a été pris par erreur, qu'ils peuvent tout simplement offrir un crédit pour le futur. Donc, c'est des problèmes, je crois, de service à la clientèle que nous allons explorer lors de cette enquête. Okay, do you find that most of the complaints are coming from cottage country people who aren't there for months at a time during the winter, let's say? Well, that's happened. I mean, we've had complaints about someone who's burnt, whose house burnt down and there was no hydro and he was still getting bills. Uh, so, and having difficulty getting answers from Hydro One. Yes? So, uh, uh, do you think um, it would be wise if you were a Hydro One customer to have automatic withdrawal from your bank account given some of the past practices that you might wake up and find? I certainly, wouldn't, I certainly would not advise it. I mean, you know, the position they take is they won't refund the money. They'll simply offer you credit. They say their hands are tied by the legislation. So we're going to be looking at that. And if it, if it is the case, we are going to explore on how to untie their hands by the legislation. I mean, to offer a credit is a $20,000 credit for future use. You'll have to turn on all your washing machines to be able to use the credit. I think it's public, Hydro One is publicly owned. It is the Ontario government, or the Ontario public, that owns it. Do you find it amazing that they would take $22,000 or $20,000 out of someone's bank account and then say, well, you'll get it back when we decide you get it back? You know, we're only starting this investigation, so these are not findings. I've been communicating to you what we hear from complainants, the general themes, which is causing this investigation. But certainly the themes we are getting at this early stage from these 700 or so complaints reminds me of how, of the feedback we received when we launched our investigation into the OLG and MPAC, uh, where now these organizations have been completely transformed with a new sense of public service. And certainly during this investigation, we will be looking 
at whether that culture of public service is there at Hydro One or not, and taking it from there. But certainly, I have that same deja vu feeling from the early days of the OLG MPAC investigation. Is this attitude typical of a, of a, a Crown Corporation that's only, only game in town? That's what it sounds like. It sounds like a, you know, the traditional systemic problem of a, of a corporation, mm -hmm. a Crown Corporation. You know, again, it's too early right now to come to any con any conclusions, um, but those are issues we will be exploring during the course of the investigation. I've, I've had direct withdrawal billing for cable and things like that, and they, there was always a cap on what they'd be allowed to take if you went over your services. How, how, how come that doesn't seem to exist? Do you, I, it's a good question. Thanks thanks for the comment. We'll allow, <laughs> it's a very good point. Very good point. We. Oui. Uh, Hydro Hydro One has uh, Hydro One has a Hydro One a delegué uh, le, les services de la clientèle à une compagnie, une tierce partie, euh, tierce compagnie du nom de Vertex. Et puis l'appel que vous allez uh, placer à Hydro One pour uh, soulever un problème de facturation ou de service à la clientèle est un appel qui est répondu par Vertex et non pas Hydro One. Ce n'est que si votre plainte vaut au prochain niveau que le service à la clientèle de Hydro One est affecté. What I said in English, in French rather, is that Hydro One has contracted out customer service to a third party by the name of Vertex. And the Vertex group will be the ones taking your first complaint. And it's only if the problem is escalated to the second level that you will actually be speaking with someone from Hydro One. So all that will be, will be explored during the investigation, the efficiency of the relationship, and uh, the relationships between uh, Vertex and Hydro One as they relate back to consumer service. <laughs> Pour moi ou pour les citoyens? C'est difficile d'avoir les réponses pour les citoyens, il n'y a aucun doute. C'est difficile pour moi en tant qu'Ombudsman de recevoir des réponses à nos plaintes. Je peux juste imaginer le niveau de difficulté pour un citoyen qui décide de s'attaquer au système. Op opposing views. If there are smart meters in place, why are so many bills being based on estimates? Again, very good question. It's one of the reasons why we're launching this investigation today, and I, I don't want to say more until we actually have uh, evidence before us. Christina, did you have a question? Yeah, I was going to ask. Um, your your investigation is going to take nine months, and I'm thinking probably then a few months for a report. What advice do you have for Hydro One customers who may be having these issues over the next year? What should they do to protect themselves from the practices that you've been outlining? I think Hydro One should uh, uh, establish contact with our office if their experience falls within those two areas that we're investigating. In my business, there's a phenomenon known as issue creep, which is when you take too much to chew on. So we've started with these two narrow issues. They are narrow issues, but they cover, that's the, those are the themes, the most prevalent themes among the 700 complaints we have. Uh, if need be, we'll do a second hydro investigation. We've uh, taken on SIU twice, and uh, if we feel that it's necessary once we finish this first chunk, we'll, we'll come back at it. But for now, we, uh, we want to simply manage expectations that those are the two areas. There's a tremendous amount of grief over high hydro rates, compensation, pensions, this kind of thing, but uh, one, one step at a time. Thank you very so, much. Can you, before you go, can you summarize? The Hydro One's attitude so far. Uh, so far, we uh, we haven't enjoyed the kind of rapport that we normally enjoy with other provincial government organizations. You may have heard me um, complain, raise issues of all types with the provincial government over the last eight and a half years. But one of the issues that I have not raised is the issue of cooperation. When we pick up the phone, we call the provincial government. We get a very high degree of cooperation. With Hydro One, it takes two, three, four calls, a couple of weeks, 
and then we don't get straightforward answers. Uh, we feel we get the, the runaround. Sometimes it's like wrestling with a slippery pig. And uh, that's why my heart goes out to uh, those uh, average citizens who try to take on uh, the Goliath that is Hydro One. But uh, we're going to be um, taking a systemic approach. They've been served with Section 18 notice, which gives us the formal powers under the Act. And uh, we're hard at work. Thank you.